On January 8th of 2021, the legendary icon Star Underscore suddenly reemerged on his main channel to discuss his move away from Team Fortress 2 content. His last TF2 related upload was over five years ago, and despite many having already drawn their own conclusions, an official statement in this format was never given until now. If you're looking to indulge in a maximized YouTube engorgement, be sure to watch his video first before you expose yourself to my analysis. The purpose of this video is to offer my own perspective. What's done is done. The past cannot be changed and frankly doesn't need to change. Despite all of the drama, things went exactly the way they were supposed to go. After moving away from TF2, Star continued to be a frequent uploader on YouTube, with notable results, just not on his main channel. And while my personal feelings on what could or should have been done differently will be quite easy to deduce, I'd like to emphasize that that doesn't really matter. Because Star, as he has always been, is in the driver's seat of his own life. And the people in this world will all do what they will do, with or without anyone's permission. We cannot control the chaos of the universe, but we can strengthen our sanity by making sense of it. Part 1. The Inversion I was born a baby. And would go on to face a number of trials in my mortal form most of which had been laid out for me before I had any awareness for what was actually going on, ultimately climaxing in my introduction to the free-to-play PC video game Team Fortress 2. As I started to wrap my head around this gaming thing, and I learned more about how the different classes worked in the game, I inevitably began binge-watching star videos in the privacy of my dark bedroom my laptop screen emitting powerful blasts of high-energy blue light rays into my eyes that likely disturbed my sleep and tampered with my clairvoyance. For a good amount of time, Star was THE guy. He was THE TF2 YouTuber. And sure, there were other ones, but it was pretty accepted that none of them really had his level of prestige and notoriety. So many of the first Star videos that I watched are just, they were so important that they're very burned into my brain. Because uh, for me, discovering TF2 was something that happened alongside watching his videos. I watched Star's video on Hightower before I ever even played on Hightower myself. Like, that was the first time I ever saw it. Star's uploads were something I really looked forward to. The type of thing you really prepare some dedicated watch time for. You make a tea, you reorganize the ergonomics of your desk, you tell your dad not to bother you for 30 minutes, you know, guy stuff. And that's the way things were for a long time. I was in this cycle of being perpetually stoked for the next star video for three or four years. But then something began to change. So like many others, I fell for the Gnostic cheat code charts on X. And I was tricked into thinking that by being mad at star, I could more readily puncture through and know that which stands beneath hypostasis type of thing. Uh, was I mad that Star was starting to be less focused on TF2 and make non-TF2 videos? No, actually. If anything, Star nudged me in the direction of being more open to other games. Something which was pretty foreign to me, as TF2 was the second video game I ever played and had regular access to. Assuming we're not counting, you know, Brick Breaker on iPod. Even as things continued to change, Star's newer analysis type videos were still very influential on me. And I can say I've tried to make some of my own videos with a similar feeling. My perception of him started to tinge towards the negative when he started to complain that his non-TF2 videos didn't get as many views as his TF2 ones. When he started to express this sense of being tormented by being in the position that he was in. 2015 and 16 was a very fiery time for me. It was a time of rebellion against my gods and the world around me in a number of ways. And without being familiar with the concept, or intending to, I would come to make Star into an arch nemesis of mine. The one luxury item that I have that many people don't uh, is an arch nemesis. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about how important an arch nemesis can be 
and how you might acquire one, what thinking should go into your process. His attitudes that I despised were the perfect fuel for my newfound principles, my reminders of how not to be. There were two main facets of what Starr said that I resented. A, he would complain about not getting enough views and seemed to have a lack of gratitude for the views, support, and power that he did have. And B, he would complain that every TF2 video that can be made has already been made. And both very much so felt like personal assaults towards my worldview. Because for my 2015-2016 eyes, the world was not a meritocracy. And I was fervently evolving past this lie that I felt everyone had told me since I was a kid. The people that society worships are not always the most deserving, I was realizing. So on one hand, there are masters of their crafts that the world has acknowledged and rewarded handsomely. But on the other, there are masters of their crafts that the world will never know. Success, attention, whose ideas are heard, these things have a lot to do with other factors beyond what the idea is itself. It feels ironic to talk about now because Star clearly understands this on some level, as he cited the whole video game donkey crisis thing about YouTube no longer being rewarding to make good content. Yet Star seems to be completely oblivious to how well he has done for himself. My 2015-2016 self would say, Star, don't complain about only getting 500k views instead of getting a million. Because there's people who are going to spend a hundred times as much energy and investment than you spent on this one video that got 500k views. And over their whole career making YouTube videos, they're not going to get 500k views on all their videos in total. So be grateful for what you have. Because some people have a whole lot less than you. Some people weren't in the right place and the right time when you happened to be. Some people weren't as likable as a person as you are. When you complain a lot that people want you to make TF2 videos, ah, uh, people want me to make videos. People want me to, want me to do something creative and easy. I don't want you to do anything that people want me to do. Anything that people want me to do. I strongly believe that TF2 could go on forever with no updates and we would never run out of TF2 videos to make. Because it's not about the game, it's about what we do with it. Could Star have made exciting TF2 videos that weren't gameplay live commentaries of things he's already done a million times before? I think so. When Star and Germa left and stopped making TF2 YouTube videos, there was this big hole that opened up for new people to fill. And a number of TF2 creators would go on to prove that there was room for new creativity and new ideas in TF2 without it depending on new maps and new weapons. You see, I'm the type of person who was programmed by my parents to use complaining very sparingly and that uh, it's cringe if you use it in situations where you're not 100% justified. So those are my gripes, but I never left a comment telling you to kill yourself and record one last, you know, late night live commentary before you do it. But I was upset at you for my own reasons. Part 2. Common sense goes without saying. So, was Star's TF2 fanbase super toxic? Certainly some of the comments that he pointed out were. But the craziest thing about this whole predicament is that Star doesn't know what we know as obvious. Because it was so obvious. It never had to be said. It was never a hot take. It was never interesting for us to say, for us to think about. But the majority of TF2 players that I've met from my era essentially grew up watching your commentaries. Everybody I knew back then idolized you at some point. If you made a video using like a weird weapon, and then I go launch TF2 six hours later, every pub has someone trying that weapon. You literally popularized market gardening, troll during, rocket jump, market gardening, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was pretty much Star. 
I had a market gardening phase because of your videos, and I know a lot of people who did. And just the saddest part about all this is what is so obvious to me and many others was never said. People don't feel the need to comment something that to them is so obvious. It got me thinking about it because I really never comment on videos. I've watched a gargantuan amount of YouTube and I hardly ever leave comments. If ever, it's like a joke comment. So on videos that seriously affected me in a positive way, forget about it. And even if I or any of the other countless, countless people who held you in such high regards and supported you in their minds as I did, had the urge to tell you about it, a lot of times we don't even know how to explain exactly what we're feeling. Yes, you made gameplay commentaries, but we grew attached and liked you as a person. In Star's video, he also noted that part of his detachment was because he didn't like the direction the developers were going, or not going, with the game. And again, I guess this may be insanely obvious to me, but not to Star. We didn't like it either. And I see how, if you might have gone on TF2 Reddit any time between 2013 and 16, you would have seen a lot of stuff that sounded like, Hey guys, don't bully the devs! Oh, it's hard work to get paid six figures to release community-made hats every couple months. We owe our lives to Valve for making our favorite game! But those are the people who spend all day on fucking TF2 Reddit. A vocal minority. And I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for the everyone who's probably never felt the need to talk about it in a public forum. And I can't tell you how many times I've had this same conversation over and over again in the past six years with, you know, so many different TF2 veterans about the Valve problem and how painful it's been. So Star, you were disappointed with all the failed promises? We were too, man. Us too. By no means is the TF2 community perfect. There are bad, angry, vengeful, toxic people out there. And you talked in your video about how you were DDoS the last time you tried to stream TF2. And I remember that era well, because it wasn't just happening to you. Literally every notable TF2 streamer at that time was regularly getting DDoS and having a hard time just playing the game. And look at us now. For the last year, we've all soldiered on with our crying smiles as there's pretty much an 80% chance you're going to queue into a casual game and they'll be cheaters. If you play for an hour, it's basically guaranteed. But the hundreds of amazing connections I've made through this game just in my time, none of those people want that. The silent, vast, vast majority doesn't want anyone getting DDoS. They don't want cheaters in the game, and they wish Valve would do more. There are bad, angry, vengeful, toxic people everywhere in the world, in every game, in every community. And now, the bad eggs in TF2 are bad eggs, no doubt. We should vilify them, bring them to justice. The unfortunate thing is that in everything we've been talking about, the deeds of the few that have been made very visible have overshadowed the deeds and feelings of the rest of us. And as Star famously said in his Just Talking video, you really can't process what 800,000 views or 24,000 likes really means, and that those are actually people. It might be easier to get the humanity and the sense of realness from one hate comment than it is to get any of that from 800,000 views. Just the text on the screen. Part 3. Give me your money right now, or I blast your head open with this gun. In general, I find it difficult to pick apart Star's reasoning because so much of his points seem to be expressed and perhaps understood within this framework of exaggeration and extremity. The conversation is always about how that's not what everyone wants. Either everyone wants you to only make TF2 videos or no one does. Eventually, Team Fortress 2 live commentaries became shallow and disappointing and unfulfilling. I just didn't want to do it anymore. There's nothing there. I could be so much more, but nobody wanted me to be more. Really? Nobody? Zero out of a hundred people? 
Again and again, there is this pattern of dualities, a forced binary where it has to be one option or the other. You can either sell your soul and make Fortnite clickbait goofy tube videos that earn millions, or you can be the hero who makes Da Vinci level video essays on whatever you want to a tiny community and starve for the rest of your life. Nothing in between. It's impossible to be anywhere else on that spectrum because there is no spectrum. All people on social media are treated like it's a dream job that you should be there to entertain me and I'm the one doing it for you. So you need to be grateful all the time because I would kill to be in your position. The idea that the problem here is that you're not being grateful all of the time is crazy. No one is mad that you were only grateful sometimes when you should be grateful all the time. At least in my case, I became disillusioned because you started shifting to an attitude of ungratefulness for the 500,000 views you got on your real videos. That those 500,000 views end up getting forgotten because you couldn't stop fixating on how you had more views on your fake lazy ones. I don't want to make clickbait. I don't want to do react videos. I don't want to do the same tired stale content just because that's what people want me to do and that's who they want me to be. Who's asking you to make clickbait react videos? People keep bringing up TF2, yes, because you were literally the most iconic TF2 player for like five years. I'm sure Michael Phelps has more to his life and his personality and passions and interests than swimming, but does that mean he should get pissed every time someone associates him with swimming and asks him about it? Look, Star, you were the king of TF2. Sorry, bro. You said in your video that you thought maybe people would stop talking about TF2 if you tried hard enough to make other good content, and that this didn't work for you. Based on the amount of popularity that you had, you should expect that people never stop talking about TF2. And be okay with that, because who cares? You're cherry-picking all these comments from people who clearly have no tolerance for you being anything other than the TF2 live commentary guy forever. But it seems like there were hundreds of thousands of people who were okay with who you wanted to become. What was the point of putting attention on and talking about this whole people want me to make TF2 videos and I don't get enough views for my real videos back in the day? Just upload what you want. Fuck the people who don't care anymore. Be a dead YouTuber, you know? Is it so bad? And is this really old news either? I feel like the days of expecting all of your subscribers to be engaged and pleasing everyone in your YouTube channel are so long gone. Like that only happens anymore when your channel's just beginning and rising. Because there's so many dead YouTube channels who make videos for like 5% of their subscribers, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. People still have careers doing that. Who's holding you at gunpoint, Star? Part 4. Star underscore is not a real person. Dude, I would have been a millionaire if I just kept making garbage TF2 videos. It's easy, it required no thought, no effort, no soul and I could just pump them out and you'd watch them, no matter what they were, it didn't matter. So this, this is exactly why I rebelled against Star in my mind. Simple me in 2015, with no successful platforms, that guy couldn't imagine any universe in which he doesn't keep pressing that make lazy easy videos get one million dollars button. Just press the shit out of it. And for 2021 me, a layman, I can pour my heart and soul into something, even steal all my viewership from Lazy Purple, and still not be eligible to make any money for my videos. So naturally, it's enviable to have such a large audience. But here's the important part. I can't relate to Star at all in what he did in his position, because I've never been in his position. Unless you're one of the small handful of notorious TF2 YouTubers that are out there, you're like me, and you have no idea what it's like to be on that side of the glass. Star is not a real person to us. How could he be? How could we possibly understand what it's like to be in that position? We of course can imagine that we would know what it's like. We can imagine what we would do if we had what he had. But only in contrast to having lived our own lives without what he has. And forget being that successful, a lot of people don't even know what it's like to garner any audience and create content at all. 
So I want to be totally fair here that Star received plenty of unjust abuse from people who feel entitled to content and they've been consumers their entire life and they don't really see creators as real people. They're a commodity, like food you buy from the store. They exist to satisfy their needs. A steak, probably not gonna act up and refuse to be eaten if you've paid for it. But a creator, a creator might. And being a content creator is as hard as it's ever been to be a professional creator because you're now constantly able to engage with the reactions to your work. And you're helplessly left to theorize how you can get more reception, different reception, a better reception. And while creators have some power, they can control what they make, they don't hold power over the outcome of how people will receive it. You will hear it if you haven't already, over and over, that so many YouTubers' most popular videos are the ones they never expect to be so popular. And on the other hand, every YouTuber also has some video that they think is their magnum opus that never got the reception it should have. Someone can be creating something and think their audience is enjoying it for a particular reason, but really the audience might be enjoying it for an entirely different reason. The nature of this connection between the content creator and the consumer is something that's pretty murky and hard to understand. All we can know for sure is that there is a connection, more of it or less of it, as indicated by the amount of views, likes, and comments. Why some sink while others float is not always so clear the time because I would kill to be in your position. So get up and do it. I'm replaceable. I made Team Fortress 2 live commentaries. Go for it, dude. That's the thing. You weren't replaceable, Star. And this is the problem. Would there have been someone else who was the King TF2 YouTuber if you weren't there? Of course. But you were there. You were what rose to the top in a sea of live commentaries out there. The internet chose you to represent them. They liked you, not even for any reason in particular. You'd pop on a star TF2 live commentary, and it felt like you had a friend, you had an escape. Was it the greatest art of the 21st century? Did we take it that seriously? Probably not. It was simple, but beautiful in its simplicity. And most importantly, we needed it. We needed it in a dumb, superficial way. It was a glimpse of joy in a life that can be mundane, problematic, painful, confusing, awkward, uncomfortable. Shibby 2142, let's talk about Shibby. So Shibby was just as active as you were at around the same time making gameplay commentary TF2 videos. He had some audience, sure, but nobody talks about Shibby with that same kind of endearment and nostalgia that they talk about with you. You didn't choose to be you. You didn't choose for your demeanor to be designed to be the perfect storm that thousands of teenage boys would cling to and look up to as a cool, chill guy who kicks ass at Team Fortress 2. You just happened to be what everybody needed. Did Shibby fuck up his character build? Is he responsible for the fact that his personality just wasn't quite as desired as yours was? No. It's just the way things happen to be which is why I don't fully agree with what you said here. I'm confident enough to say that whatever I do, I would succeed in. And you're insane if you think that if I did the exact same stuff that I did in Minecraft, I wouldn't have similar success. How can you know? Right? In all of these games, there were plenty of people making basic, vanilla gameplay commentaries. And some of them just naturally are going to rise to the top because they're gonna be the most appealing personalities to a wide variety of people. The content that Star made that got him his initial audience, that got him a platform, was not high merit content. It's gameplay commentaries. Anyone could have done. And other people did do. Now that's not to say Star is not talented. He grew into his own and he would make a number of videos, TF2 and non-TF2 related, that were high merit content. So I think this idea of saying, oh sure, I would have been just as popular if I played Minecraft or a different game or did something slightly different back then because it's, it's me that's the good stuff that's gonna be successful no matter what, that is the arrogance of successful people. Successful people make the mistake of assuming what they did was right because they ended up successful. This is why self-help role models can be such a clusterfuck of contradictory advice 
because you're gonna find successful people who went to college for 12 years and swear by that, and successful people who didn't go to college and swear by that, and successful people who marketed the shit out of their content, and successful people who never marketed it. They were discovered or they just blew up. And all these different people, they all think their approach was right because, hey, they ended up successful. But this discounts the randomness of life, all of the reasons why the world isn't a meritocracy. It discounts the value of happening to be in the right place at the right time. It discounts the importance of being what people are already looking for. It discounts the fact that you don't have 100% control. So it makes sense that someone like Star would think I deserve to be successful. Because if I didn't deserve it, if I wasn't so good at what I do, I wouldn't have been so popular. And it's fair of him to want to defend himself against people who are undermining that. Because who wants to live in the nihilistic hellhole of realizing we have very little to be proud of or ashamed of in how the world reacts to what we do? Part 5. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. It's easy for me to say I would have done things differently if I were Star, that I would have been able to keep a positive outlook and ignore all the bad comments. But of course, if I were in his shoes, with his exact life experience up to that point, I would have done the same. I would have saw it all the same as he did. And maybe now in the present day, Star would agree that if he could go back, he would have handled things differently. But what good does that thinking do for us now? Where can we possibly go from dwelling on that? Right? What was so obvious to me, or you, fellow untouchable viewer, was not apparent at all to Star. You know, the 18-year-old me is perpetually mad at him, and wishes he could have that perspective that I did, and capitalize on that real power that he had. And he said it himself. When he mentioned issues in the game, they actually got fixed sometimes. But is Star the only one who's ever failed to realize the abundance of what they have while it's right there in front of them? Is he the only one? Of course not. I'm generally of the attitude that there are no accidents in life. That even when we think we're taking a misstep or doing something terrible, cause and effect, it was something that had to be done had to be done so that we could learn from it and gain understanding that would be impossible to obtain without having known what it's like to make that error. But there are some times when I reminisce about two times in my life where I wish I really would have done things differently. Where I really didn't realize how good I had it until it was gone. And I really feel that that has been the case in my life. That when something didn't mean very much to me, I didn't want it very bad, I didn't really care about it. Those kind of opportunities came into fruition effortlessly. Yet when I tried as hard as I could and gave everything to finding and creating those opportunities, it's like misfortune was my name. And so it's funny that sometimes you will go on an odyssey just to return to where you were before and where you'd gotten before with no effort so you can finally appreciate it the way you should have all along. What's done is done. Forgive yourself, forgive me, forgive Star. I'm no holier than him, him no holier than me. It's okay to be angry about it. It's okay to be hurt. But at the end of the day, I must ask myself, as I criticize Star for being ungrateful of his blessings, am I being ungrateful of mine?